Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Flying Cat Marketing Interview Series. My name is Mavisi Fuentes, and today I'm speaking to Belinda Aramidi, who is a LinkedIn coach, but focused on sales. So she is teaching us today exactly how to generate more sales through your network on LinkedIn, where you should focus your efforts, and some small steps we can take to generate more leads, but in a genuine and in a nice way on LinkedIn. So I do hope that you enjoyed as much as I did. If you did, please share it, like, uh, drop in a comment if you have any questions, and let's just hop right in. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Flying Cat Marketing interview series. Today I have Belinda Aramidi, all the way from Toronto, Canada, who is a LinkedIn personal brand and sales strategist. So I'm really excited to talk to you today. Um, she teaches, you teach, she teaches, service-based <laughs> entrepreneurs and sales ex executives how to use LinkedIn to get more clients, to build their personal brands, and uh, make more money and build strategical professional relationships. So why don't you tell me a little bit, tell us a little bit more about yourself, what your passions and superpowers are and how you got into LinkedIn brands, personal branding. Oh, well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, a little about me. So I guess personally, um, I'm married. I have three relatively small kids um, and, what else about me? Um, I don't really have any hobbies or special interests because again, I have three small kids and it's COVID season. So I'm just basically trying to survive every day. <laughs> um, I got into what it is that I do now. So I've been, I have my own consulting company now for almost two years and it really came from a place of, I want to change the way that people sell to one another. Um, I got very fortunate to discover LinkedIn at the time that I did and I think a part of my story that a lot of people don't know is I figured out how to leverage LinkedIn because I was looking for work so the dreaded ATS system was in my friend a few years back and I grew really frustrated and I'm like let me go log back into this thing called LinkedIn and all of a sudden there's this like microcosm like this community happening I'm like what the heck is going on <laughs> I'm like this is not what I left years ago I think <laughs> Prior to that, I hadn't been on LinkedIn since like 2015, which, you know, in modern day times, basically last century. Yeah. So it had changed completely. And I was able to leverage LinkedIn in order to get a job, an interview at a company that I ended up getting the job for that their ATS system had locked me out. And I was able to do it time and time again. And so I'm like, well, if it can work for getting a job, I wonder if it can get me in front of important people. And it worked. And so um, long story short, I've always, you know, had that entrepreneurial bug within me. And so I realized I'm like, okay, I've lever I know I've learned how to use LinkedIn in a way to get me in front of people that traditionally are very hard to get in front of. And I'm, there's this like icky feeling that people tend to have when they think about sales. They're like, Ooh, that thing, I don't want to do it. Although everybody loves it because you know, if you're in business, it's how the money happens, right? You want to do your passionate thing, but then there's things like food and shelter, you know, those <laughs> cost money and being able to sell helps in those pursuits. So, um, so that's what I do. I teach people how to not hate selling and to leverage LinkedIn. So um, what they know in here gets told in a way that helps to build their brand, build relationships, and ultimately makes them money. It's interesting that you're teaching them how to sell as well on LinkedIn because I, I'm also struggling with this uh, idea of selling. And I know that selling is so important and you have to do it to build your business. That is literally the only way that, <laughs> that you can build your business and have financial freedom and all of those things. But I still see LinkedIn as a platform uh, for just creating content, inter interacting with content and building a network. Mm -hmm. At what point of your LinkedIn journey do you start or at what point do you recommend your clients to start using it for sales? I think that's a really good question. No one has ever asked it to me in that way. So good on you. I'm like, oh, hold on a moment. <laughs> we don't know how to answer this one. Okay. Um, 
I think that once you have made it, okay, so let's back up a little bit and look at the buyer's journey. So before, like when I started in sales and up until that moment in time, if you wanted information about a product or a service, you had to go through a salesperson, right? Um, And they would be able to give you more information. Now it's flipped on its head where a person can go on somebody's web, someone or a company's website, they can gather a bunch of information. And if they can't do that, then they'll go to a place or a person where they can do that because people feel very comfortable in buying in that way. They want to gather information before they ever interact with someone. They're like, hmm, I basically decided I probably want to work with you, but I need just a little bit more and I'm going to need to talk to you. And so I think that before you really can leverage LinkedIn as a way to sell to somebody, and I've noticed this in how I'll see like, I'll send a message and I'll see that they've read it and they won't respond for a couple hours. And I have a, and then I'll see that they've looked at my profile. So I think you want to get the foundation right of optimizing your LinkedIn profile. So when people land on it, they have a pretty clear sense of what it is that you do, who it is that you help, how it is that they, that you help people. And then creating some content so that people can understand that you do the depth of understanding of your knowledge in that particular area, because that helps to build a little bit of trust. So now once you start having those sales related conversations, when people start trying to take like trying to get an understanding as to who you are, they feel like they can fill in the dots themselves. And so now when you sell, they're like, okay, yeah, I think I understand. And they can kind of self-sort because they look to your profile, because they look to your content and they get a little bit um, of a better idea. I think that unfortunately what a lot of people do because it's really comfortable is to focus on creating the content and showing the expertise, but it's, it's in... Um, it's initiating that sales, that sales conversation with people that allows you to have an element of control over the sales process that you just don't, when you're hoping that in the moment that they want to buy, that they're going to remember to reach out to you. Right. So, so initiating the sales conversation is DMing people on LinkedIn. Yeah. DMing people, but then also it's in being strategic with who you're connecting with on LinkedIn. So I'm not team get third, get to 30,000 as quickly as possible. Because for instance, um, let's say, what kind of business? Um, Let's say you sell snowboards, right? And, you know, probably connecting with a bunch of people from Dubai, or, you know, the Philippines or Jamaica, or, (laughs) you know, somewhere in sub-Saharan Africa is not a great idea, because they don't have a lot of snow. You know, you might sell a couple, but, you know, so you want to make sure that you're connecting with the right, quote unquote, type of people so that when, so that you're, you're actually in front of your audience. It's not being in front of an audience that matters, it's being in front of the right people. It's better to be, to, you know, sell out a small theater with a hundred people who love your type of music than to have an amphitheater with 30,000 people. And they're all like, I can't stand like classical music. Yeah. And it's like, you're just, you're just performing for the wrong audience. It's not like everyone hates classical music, just that group. That makes sense. So mm-hmm. I saw, I saw a, a post, I think it was a carousel post that you had put uh, recently about how to spend your time on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, uh, which I find pretty interesting <laughs> because there's a lot of people talk. Okay, yeah, personal branding on LinkedIn, but that takes forever. I'm not going to spend my whole day on LinkedIn. Can mm-hmm. I still get a benefit from it? So tell us about how you recommend people to spend their time, and including these sales conversations versus just networking conversations. So there's private conversations going on in DMs, which are networking, and then there's direct sales. So, and then including everything else. How yeah, I know. Time. <laughs> It's like all the things. So I really start off for anyone who hasn't seen it. It's a LinkedIn in 50, 30 and 60 minute chunks. Right. And so it's really focused on the activity that is going to move your like business forward, really. And I know that I initially fell into the trap where it was like, but I'm doing stuff. Right. And it's like, okay, but are you doing the things that are actually moving the needle forward in your business? So it's, it's, 
I think if you can think of it as a front of house and back of house, right? So if you think of a restaurant, you'll have like the magic happens in the kitchen, but you still need a server. You still need a, you know, hostess is going to bring it to your table and like all of that stuff but for, you know, your actual meal and the stuff that you're paying for really and truly it happens in the kitchen. So you need to spend some time at the front of the house to make sure that, the, you know, that, you know, the people at the table are happy. Um, and that's your time where you are on the platform commenting on content if you're not creating your own content already. But the majority of time should be behind the scenes where you are connecting with your connections who you believe might be in an ideal client for you um, via DM and having those conversations because, you um, you know, as much as, you know, having high engagement on your content is really important, people are going to feel comfortable to talk, engage with you and talk to you about services via direct message. Those are the messages that, like, that's where the magic happens. So it's like, I have a whole system and everything, of course, where it's not just like the dreaded, you know, hi, do you want to buy from me? Like, <laughs> that makes everybody cringe and, you know, the people sending the message and the people receiving it. Right. So it's about having that blend of, um, of having appropriate business focused conversations that are moving, that are very clearly moving in the direction of business um, while still building some sort of a relationship, like um, almost like an easy out where you are finding out a little bit more about the person in a professional context um, and slowly positioning yourself as, you know, a subject matter expert and ally in some way, shape or form. So as you spend more time on the platform, you're able to do more things. So when you get closer to the 60 minute mark, now you have more time to create and post content, nurture that content, you know, spend some more time, you know, front of house, again, just like a restaurant where the long longer someone stays at your restaurant, the more times you're going to see them from a front of house perspective, right? Um, so that's how I want people to think of it is you need both the kitchen and the front of house staff um, in order to make the whole operation work. That's a really good analogy. So in that case, the priority should be the DMs, right? Because if yeah. you're serving people food, but you don't have any food to give them, mm -hmm. <laughs> then they'll exactly. just be at the table. Yeah, because it's ultimately about the relationships and that's the direction of business where people feel like you're taking the time to speak to them personally, um, that will go a really long way. And what's really interesting, and I found it fascinating and it's, it hasn't really changed since a couple of years ago, is so many more people are paying attention to your content than you realize. Like people who never like and never content, but they see your stuff. And, you know, I'll never forget the first time a vice president of a bank, I just reached out to say happy, you know, anniversary, um, work anniversary that popped up for them. And they're like, oh, thanks. And they're like, oh, I saw your post last week about um, relationship building. I thought it was so cool. And I'm like, what? you know, I exist. <laughs> I was so surprised. Um, and so it's just an opportunity for you to engage with people who may who have probably seen you on their feet but they just aren't comfortable being someone who's super outwardly active on LinkedIn so you can deepen the relationship that way so the dms actually that you're doing aren't cold sales it's kind of starting a conversation first it is it is so it's it's taking the time so probably one of the biggest mistakes that I think that people will make in general is not tying in who the person is as a person into the message and just really focusing on their title. And every six months or so, I do like to talk to executives to find out, okay, well, like, what's your behavior? Don't sell them anything. I just ask them like, you've got a fancy title. I know people are pitching left, right, and center. I'd love to pick your brain about, you know, how you're leveraging LinkedIn. And so the number one thing that they tell me is that when people pitch them and it's very clear that they haven't even taken the time to look at their profile, it's like they just saw the title and they're going gung-ho for that title, it is an immediate turnoff, right? So I always tell people that if you're trying to build a relationship, it's like, it's like if you're trying to like catch, you see someone on the road and you're trying to start a conversation, you'll be like, oh, I like your shirt or, you know, it's like us. As soon as I saw your shirt, like we both are wearing animal print, 
no guys, this is not planned. <laughs> but you know, you notice something that's either common or something that you really like. And I'll never forget when the first time I interviewed um, a set of executives, um, the gentleman told me, you know, I spend time crafting my profile too. And so if you take the time to look at my profile and to call something out that is, you know, very specific to my role or something very specific to something I've done in my career, that it humanizes the other person because you've seen them as a human too. Um, and I feel that that's really important. So you start, I always say, make the connection to who they are as a professional, you know, as much as you can, because you're going to want to talk to them about business. So if you can make a sort, some sort of a comment on what they're posting on LinkedIn or what they do as a professional right now, now you're moving down the right path versus saying, hey, is your favorite color blue, red, or green? <laughs> How are we going to turn that into a business conversation? So, Yeah, no, that makes sense um, as well, because I get two different kind of messages that both turn me off and I usually don't mm -hmm. respond or I have this template that I took from, I can't remember who posted it on LinkedIn, but he put this, this, anyway, let me explain. Uh, <laughs> there's either, <laughs> there's either the message, which is straight up, Hey, do you want to buy my services? That's the first message they send. This is what I do. Um, I can grow your business. And I generally, generally don't respond to that because I'm like, you don't know anything about me or my business. And the second one is where the first message is, Hey, tell me about your business and your goals, which I can see is kind of like, okay, they're trying to get to know me, but, but uh, they could have looked at my profile. I share so much information on there where I also generally don't respond to those messages because it smells um, like I'm going to have to get out of an uncomfortable situation. So the, yeah. the template that I told you about that, um, I wish I could remember who I could give it credit to. I just can't remember who posted it, but it's something like, Hey, thanks. But I get a ton of messages like this every day. What I recommend you do is follow me. If you haven't followed me yet, engage with some of my content, start posting on some of your own content, and then we can continue this conversation later. Um, something like that. I love that. Yeah. And then generally they don't even respond to that either. Of course. But I think that what you were saying, like spending naughty, it doesn't even take five minutes take yeah. less than five minutes to know a little bit about that person that may be a better way to start those conversations um, absolutely yeah and I think just like you where you think of those two messages it's like those make me feel it so it's almost like put your own message through your own you know own reader like if I was to receive this message how would I feel, mm -hmm. right? And I know that sometimes we can be our own worst critics. So you want to like be careful with how, <laughs> how you put yourself through your own filter. Um, but it's, it's what makes you feel like opening up to a person, yeah. you know? Um, and someone just asking, oh, tell me about your, like your goals. And I'm like, I don't even know you. Like, I don't even want to tell you what my favorite drink is. Like, who are you? <laughs> Where did you, where'd you find me? Are we even connected? How did I let you through? <laughs> So it's, I think, making it, trying to enact a conversation, but then also being okay with the fact that not everyone wants to yeah. have that, that conversation. Um, and you're going to have to likely have a couple of ways, like if you have kind of your like top 100 clients that you're trying to, to reach, that you're, you may have to like you're more than likely going to have to have a couple of ways that you initiate a conversation because some people just don't respond to that. Right. Mm -hmm. I had one gentleman who is like one of the most important marketing people in the country, like in the country. I found that out like after the fact, but like, like how important he is in the world of marketing. But um, I think it took me probably six or seven times reaching out. Um, for him to acknowledge me <laughs> okay and like I wasn't like really weird and spammy it was like once every couple of months I would say something but you know we eventually had a meeting and I had to ask and I was like so I have to know like why are we meeting today I feel like I messaged you for the better part of a year and I didn't hear anything he's like I just appreciate your tenacity okay. and you know so um you know, I've been thank people have thanked me for following up because a lot of people have a lot of things going on and you can only multiply it the higher up chain that you go. Um, so if you are a 
you know, and I don't mean this in a, in a, in a bad way, but if you're a nobody to someone, like you're not on the totem pole, like these people from small business owners to leaders of huge corporations have so many things that they're dealing with in a day that it's like, it's like an emergency room triage, right? Where it's like, I'm just dealing with what I have to. And, you know, the rest kind of falls through the cracks. It's true that some people, they want to work with you, but they're like, I just can't deal with this because not only, it's not even about the money. It's like, if I start working with this person, then that's going to take more of my time investment as well. Exactly. Um, exactly. So it, it, it has to be the right time. So kind of maybe keep, if you keep messaging them, you'll catch them at the right time. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and that, that you, you exit, like, I get so excited when I see the people do this. Like my, when my clients do this, it makes me excited. It's you are identifying one of the objections, like one of the key objections someone might have with working with you is I'm already like right here. Like this is like water. Yeah. Right. And it's like adding another thing to my plate is just going to sink me even lower. And so if you can identify that, Hey, you know, I can only imagine that you have a lot of, you know, things you're juggling and you can help identify that objection and how working with you can help free up time in their day or help simplify what it is that they're doing in their business. That can be the thing that you're like, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Oh my gosh. Okay. I, I can find 20 minutes to talk to you. So what kind of people, I mean, I know that you're working with service based entrepreneurs and sales executives. Do you ever work with CEOs of who have a team, a sales team already. Who I do. So that's one of the great things about the, one of the few gifts of 2020, other than the pandemic, global pandemic, um, is working with teams. So I have a couple of clients, like CEO clients, where I help them on their LinkedIn strategy, and then also help their teams with how they approach LinkedIn, um, because I think that there is probably like the worst defenders on LinkedIn are salespeople and I feel horrible because like these are my people (laughs) but I think it's like a shift of understanding how LinkedIn is no longer just a database for you to be like oh great like updated Rolodex which is what makes LinkedIn so valuable but it's it's not just a database it's like it's a communication tool it's an opportunity for people to shop the way in business as they do in their personal lives where it's like you know, let's, you know, let's go, you know, let me, let me get a sip in and a taste as to who you are. And when I'm ready, that's when I'm going to reach out to you, you know, or that's when, you know, I'm going to, I'm buying and switching. And like, like you said, going with a new service provider, it, it can be such a time intensive activity that people want to make sure if I'm going to go with a new vendor that it's not going to be a waste of my time and that everyone in the organization is not going to absolutely hate me because we switched software or you know we brought someone in so what you do when you create content and you have these multiple layers on top of the connecting and direct messaging is you help take away some of that fear and apprehension with change because organizations hate change (laughs) big and small right sometimes they even hire people to help them deal with (laughs) yeah it's like this is a you problem I'm gonna go do this finance thing that I'm really good at you go fix the rest of it thank you (laughs) change that's interesting so when you work with their teams is it kind of the same process do does the CEO and all of their team members do they need to be doing the same thing on LinkedIn Um, it's a little bit different because from the CEO's perspective, what they're doing isn't, it's like they're the ship captain, right? So they're making sure that the ship is going in one direction and the employees, they all have different jobs that are all necessary in order for the boat to go in the direction that it's going. Um, so a CEO is not really, is the things that they're sharing and the way that they're building their personal brand is more of like an industry thought leader. So it's like, I understand the industry of um, the beverages or whatever it may be. Right. Whereas a salesperson is more talking to the, I don't want to say end user, but to the users of, you know, so maybe 
you know, let's say we have CEO of a beverage company. So they're talking about the beverage industry in as a thought leader within the beverage industry because they're CEO of the company. Whereas the sales reps are talking to, let's say, the owners of the stores that are going to purchase the beverages. So the way you're going to talk is going to be very different. CEO isn't really selling per se, is more selling the vision of the company and the way that they do business. Whereas the reps are trying to sell the ease or the benefit or the need um, through their content for that particular beverage. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. And is it difficult sometimes to get the buy-in of the employees to do this? Oh, yeah, I think it really depends on, like you said, who initiates it. Um, People are really, I wouldn't say people, some people are really married to the way that they've always done things. Yeah. And it's kind of like, I've noticed it very strangely where it's like, oh, I've been on LinkedIn, you know, longer than you've been alive. And I'm like, first of all, no, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> no. <laughs> LinkedIn's really not that old. <laughs> Let's calm down now. Um, but, you know, it's this, this idea of, you know, you're trying to change how I do things. This is going to be awful. Or they think of like link, people on LinkedIn who are kind of more like chihuahuas that are like, yip, 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 and they don't want to be like a LinkedIn chihuahua. And they're like afraid that that's, you know, what I'm coming in to do. And I, I always tell people, I'm like, well, listen, give me 60 minutes. If I can't get you to buy into like, quote unquote, a new way of looking at LinkedIn, then, you know, you don't have to adopt anything that I suggest. And sure enough within 60 minutes it's like the light bulbs start coming up they're like oh that's what you mean I'm like oh duh yes of course so um I think that it really depends on like age two like I do find that there is less of an adoption to this new age hippie LinkedIn stuff um but again I just asked for 60 minutes I'm like give me 60 minutes that's all I ask and if you still haven't bought in, then, you know, you could take it up with the powers that be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the boss is still like, no, you're still going to have to do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They've bought in. So it's, it's like, just, just like anything in sales, it's understanding your audience. And if I'm, if I'm, you know, being brought into the organization from someone who, you know, has to move it up the chain of command. It's, there's a lot of data to back up everything that I'm talking about too, right? So as much as I've got a feeling, I've got my own personal data, I've got outside data of, you know, the way that people are looking at LinkedIn and how they're, how they're, how just things are changing and how social proof is, is such a really big deal. And so I work with a lot of companies where because of what they're doing on LinkedIn, it makes them seem a lot bigger than they are. And sometimes that's what people need in order to give an organization a chance. Um, and then, you know, like even large organizations, it's okay, fine. You know, you're a big organization, but how do I know that you can help me with my needs? It no longer is like a sure thing that a large organization is just going to understand how to do things. So People want the proof. People want the proof in the pudding. Yeah. Absolutely. Are there any changes this year in the last months in the algorithm or any any new trends that we need to know about for using LinkedIn? Ooh. New trends when it comes to LinkedIn. Um, what I'm noticing, so a couple of things. So number one, whenever if your if your views are like this or they've been going up and then all of a sudden they're like plateauing or they're like seem to be free falling, know that the LinkedIn algorithm, like LinkedIn's doing some things on the back end. So one of the big things that um, I've been noticing over the last few weeks um, is LinkedIn stories. So I know the rollout for stories globally is like on its forthcoming because the views on LinkedIn seems to be going down for a lot of people. A lot of people are complaining about it. So I know on the back end, they're doing a lot of funny stuff, but also LinkedIn has really been pushing ads, you know, and every, every social media platform does this where um, 
where, you know, the organic reach starts getting pulled back a little bit in order to, you know, get people to want to put more money into ads. So that means that one-to-one connection with people, direct messaging, going onto people's profiles, interacting with people's content is becoming more and more important in order to get your content in front of people. Um, So that's where that direct messaging, you know, really helps because, um, because when the algorithm sees that you have a personal, some sort of personal relationship with someone, the algorithm will favor your content in that person's feed. So for me, I don't really care if 10, 10,000 or a hundred thousand people see my stuff. I just care that the 10 right people see my stuff. So if you're direct messaging with a handful of people a day and they're your like dream clients, they're going to see your stuff because LinkedIn thinks that you have some sort of relationship. So it doesn't matter if you get a hundred thousand views. No, it doesn't. It just matters that that person sees your stuff and understands you to be a subject matter expert. So that when the time comes, because it will, that they'll be like, Hey, I know that person. Yeah. I, I, I know a guy or I know a gal. I know somebody, I know a person. <laughs> I know a person who can help with that very thing. Yeah. Even if they're not a uh, direct messaging you. That's finally the trick for all the platforms, Mm -hmm. actual relationships, which you can't scale in the end. Um, Yeah, that part sucks. (laughs) You can. You you have to have, you personally have to have conversations with people and you can't have a bot do it. You can't have a VA do it. You need to show up yourself. Exactly. That's the secret. It It is. It's, (laughs) it's. It's kind of like, and it was funny because earlier today I was talking to a client and I'm like, you know what? If things are very simple. It's kind of like, um, if things are very simple, but like when you think about baking, like you bake a cake, you got flour, you have eggs, you have milk, you have sugar, baking powder, and like Bob's your uncle, right? But it's in how you put those ingredients together that you get and get the difference between a pancake a cake, abundant cake, muffins, a souffle, you know, cookies, same base ingredients, relatively speaking, but it's in the way that you put the ingredients together in order to create your masterpiece. So the fundamentals are all the same across all social media platforms, but how you put it together is going to be different on each platform. And um, LinkedIn is just like the new, the new kid on the block, right? Um, So it's about get your core ingredients, which is content, optimizing your profile, understanding how to direct message and having a group of people who are connected or follow you. And then how are you going to put everything together? Do you want cake or cookies? Like what what do you want? (laughs) I love all your, can you tell I know I was just about to say it. I'm like, I, I don't speak a second language, but if analogies wasn't a a second language, it's (laughs) like, they've been so so on point to explain. I'm like, Oh, okay. I don't really get it now. That's how I build my bridges. That is how I build all my bridges. <laughs> Amazing. Cool. So uh, I just have one last question. If I were to start today, because I, mm-hmm. let's say me, for example, yeah. I create a ton of content. Yeah. I, I spend time engaging on people's content. I don't spend that much time DMing people. Mm-hmm. Uh, like if you were advising somebody, where should they start? Like what goal should I set? I'm going to DM one person a day or is that too little? 10 people a day, what is a good thing for somebody to aim for that would be effective? I would say to keep things reasonable, DM five current connections every day, like initiate that conversation. And so very simply, it can be like, you know, hi, John, I see we've been connected here on LinkedIn for a while and we haven't had a chance to personally connect. So I thought I'd reach out. And then circle it back to something on their profile. So it's like, hey, you see the word connection and start opening up their conversation, a conversation around what they do professionally. So I see you've owned your company for five years. I see you just left, you know, or I see you've just joined the team at ABC company. Um, I see you went snowboarding. I've never seen snow in my life. That's so cool. You know, like in any way that you want to, but start initiating those conversations. I think that so often, especially right now, it's like, well, not not right now, but just the way that humans are today. It's like we're always in search of new, the next, the next, the next. And it's like your next client is probably already connected to you, right? And it may 
Like, I can't tell you how many times that I've done that where I'm like, oh, I'm going to start reaching out to some people in my network. And it's resulted in like, you know, I'm hopping on the phone to talk about what it is that I do with three people. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, you know, I love your stuff. And then you sent me this message and I thought it was a sign. And I'm like, I sure as heck guess it is. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. yeah. So I think it's about, you know, without being too woo woo, but putting out that open energy. Um, because I think sometimes, especially when you create content and sometimes it can make people feel like you're not as approachable and people are like, wow, you're like really nice. And I'm like, heck yeah, I'm nice. <laughs> so you know it's that's a good point actually because if you're creating so much content they might think oh that that person's a a big shot they'll be too busy for me or something like that exactly so it's like you humanize yourself and then you see that you see them as a human too I mean that's what it's all about is that human to human connection and like I'm waiting for a vaccine so I can start hugging people again sorry (laughs) I said I'm waiting for a vaccine so I can start hugging people again (laughs) Yes, that's With, you, thing. you know, consented hugs, of course. Like, yeah, don't of worry. About <laughs> it, it's funny, because but um, all throughout this interview series, uh, we've talked about a lot of different things, Instagram, backlinking, I don't know, SEO, and it always ends up coming back to relationships and human to human and actually trying to help. Yeah, people. that's what everything yeah. is about, finally. It is. Yeah. And I think that that's great for just humankind in general. But it's like, let's just get back to the basics. The flour, the eggs, the sugar, the milk. And if, you know, you're vegan, all the substitutes for the milk yeah. and the egg. You can still make great pancakes and, and muffins. You can. I've been seeing some of this. I'm like, okay, all right then, <laughs> vegans, do you think? Awesome. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been a wonderful conversation. I have some action steps that I wrote down here that I'm going to do it. I'm excited. You're going to have to report back to me. Yeah, absolutely. The homework, five a day, <laughs> like, like fruits and vegetables, five a day. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm doing it. <laughs> All right. Uh, amazing. So I guess normally I ask where people can find you, but they'll just find you on LinkedIn, but can they yeah. find you elsewhere? Website, Twitter? Yeah. So my website is www. Do people still say that? Anyways, <laughs> www. <laughs> <That is. laughs> BelindaLaurie.com so that I have, you know, resources and related to LinkedIn and sales there. Um, I'm on Instagram very intermittently. Like I said, three kids. LinkedIn is my hobby. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for being here and I no hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Thanks, Ava. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Flying Cat Marketing Series. If you enjoyed this interview, please give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues, and subscribe to this channel. Stay tuned because next week I'll be interviewing another leader in the SaaS and startup world talking about their challenges and achievements. See you there.